you just discovered a cool new Python module which helps you to implement your program much more elegantly or even faster. And while you dig through the documentation and code of that module, you find this and this and ask yourself, what kind of sorcery is that? Don't worry, in this video you're going to learn everything that is to know about the asterisk and double asterisk operator, not to be confused with the multiplication and power, and how to use those to improve your Python code. Welcome everybody, my name is Cons and I make videos on programming, computer science and everything in between. And if that sounds something you'd like to know more about, then make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upload. As a first step, let us talk about Python's ability to assign multiple variables in one line. So let's enter x, y and z and on the other side we would like to enter 1, 2 and 3. And when we press enter, that is actually legal and if we have a look at x, y and z, we can see that they have the respective values 1, 2 and 3. And we can go even further with that. We can use sequential data types such as tuples, lists, sets or strings such as ABC and use those as values for multiple assignments. So if we enter X, Y, Z again and then T, all the elements that were in the tuple T are now assigned to the variables on the left hand side of the equal sign. The same goes for L, so we can enter X, Y and Z, L and now all the elements of the list, hello world and the exclamation mark are stored in X, Y and Z. And we can also do that for strings and sets. So if we enter X, Y, Z, S, now the values in the set that contained true, false and none are assigned to X, Y, and z and we can also do that with strings so let's enter x y z string and now we can see that the first character of the string which is a is stored in x the second character is b which is stored in y and the last character which is c is stored in z now that we know about python's ability to assign multiple variables in one go let's take that a step Further. As an example, I defined the function multiply accumulate, which is often used in AI and machine learning. And if you want to know more about that, let me know down below in the comments because that is something I do for a living. And multiply accumulate takes A and B, multiplies it, and then adds C. I also defined a tuple containing three numbers, one, two, and three. We can now call multiply accumulate with the single values of t, so we take t1, t0 and t2, press enter and we can see we get the result 5. But instead of accessing each value of the tuple with its index, we can also use the sequential unpacking operator. So we enter multiply, accumulate and then we enter asterisk or star t and this will take all the values in our tuple t and assigns it to the parameters in our function we have just defined. So if we press enter, we can see we get the same result as before, but we don't have to access each element of the tuple with its index. We just use the sequential unpacking operator, asterisk or star, and put it in front of the t, which will then make sure that the values in t are assigned to the parameters of our function. Everything in order, so 1 goes to a, 2 goes to b and 3 goes to c. We could also define a tuple containing a fourth value and then call multiply accumulate and then we can see we get an error because multiply accumulate takes three positional arguments while four were given. So we have to make sure if we use the sequential unpacking operator with a function that our sequence, which could be a tuple, a list, a string, actually contains the exact amount of values we would like to assign to the parameters of that function. And if you have the feeling that I present the code too fast in this video, don't worry, I always have a written article for every video I make on YouTube 
on my website for which you can find the link down below in the description. While the sequential unpacking operator allows us to unpack a sequential data type into the parameters of a function, we can also use the asterisk data type in the signature of a function. So let's have a look at this add function. This add function only has one parameter, which is arcs, and arcs has an asterisk in front. And that means we can pass from one to an arbitrary amount of values to that function. What that function does, it takes arcs and then iterates over it and accumulates everything in a sum. So all the values we are going to pass to that function should be of a number type, so float or integer. So let's have a look on how that works. So we enter add and then we add an arbitrary amount of numbers here for and we press enter and we can see if we add one, two and three together, we get 10. But I could also add a five to for 15 or a six and get 21. And we could also just pass one value, which is one and get the sum of that, which is one as well. So using the asterisk in front of an argument of a function allows us to pass an arbitrary amount of values. And inside this arcs parameter is represented as a tuple. So if we enter def at arcs and then print type arcs and call the add function again, we can see that the type of arcs is tuple and that allows us to iterate over all the values in that tuple or the parameter arcs. We can also mix named and unnamed parameters in a function signature. So here in this function f we have c as a named parameter and arcs marked with an asterisk as a sequence of unnamed parameters. So if we call f with 1, 2, 3, 4 as arguments, we can see that the 1, which is the first argument we pass, is assigned to the parameter c, while all the other arguments we have passed are assigned to the tuple arcs. We can also change the order of named and unnamed parameters in our function signature. So let's enter def and then just change the order of arcs and c, and otherwise we are going to stay with the same function body. When we call f now with f1234, we get an error because we have the name parameter in the end and the unnamed parameters at the front. In order to fix that, we have to tell the function f in the function call which parameter is going to be assigned to c. And for that, we just enter c for the last parameter because that should be assigned to c and press enter. And if we do that, we can see that four is now bound to the parameter c and all the other arguments are bound to the tuple arcs. However, it is not possible to have multiple tuples of unnamed parameters in your function. So if we enter def add star a and star b, that would mean we have two sequences of unnamed parameters and enter that and say print a, and we can see that gives us an error because the star or asterisk operator can only appear once in a function signature. Now we have seen the sequential unpacking operator and how to use it inside and outside a function. And if you got any questions so far on this video or any general question on computer science or programming, make sure to check out our Discord community with the link down below in the description where you can ask questions on those topics or share your own programming projects you're working on at the moment. Now that we know about the sequential unpacking operator, let's go over to the double asterisk operator and see what that can do for us. To check out the double asterisk operator, I prepared the function print arguments, which has one parameter, kw arcs, which stands for keyword arcs, which has two asterisks in front. And that allows us to pass an arbitrary amount of named parameters to a function. When we have a look at the function body, we can see that kw arcs is actually a dictionary and using the items function, we can access the key and the value and print the key value pairs when we have passed something to that function. So if we call print arguments with a equals one, b equals two and c equals three, we can see that we get a list 
of A, B and C with their respective values 1, 2 and 3. We could also call that function with an unnamed parameter, but that will result in an error because we only accept named parameters for this function. So using the double asterisk operator, we are able to pass an arbitrary amount of named parameters to a function, as we have just seen with print arguments. And any parameter that is marked with a double asterisk in front will be a dictionary inside a function. So we can also manipulate the dictionary and use all the dictionary functions we know so far. And you can actually find a cheat sheet for Python dictionaries for free in my Gumroad shop as a downloadable PNG or as a printable PDF version for only five euros. So check out the link down below to my Gumroad shop to get your Python cheat sheet. And talking about dictionaries, we can also use the double asterisk operator to unpack a dictionary into the named parameters of a function. So for that, I prepared the function f abc, which has three named parameters, and we're only going to print those. And also the dictionary d, which has a, b, and c as keys with the values one, two, and three. And we can now call f with a double asterisk operator in front of d. And this will make sure that a, b, and c are actually assigned to a, b, and c in the function signature. We could also change the order of a, b, and c just to make sure that it isn't order dependent. So we add c in the middle and give it the value three. And this will still work the same way. It will unpack the key value pairs of our dictionary into the named parameters of our function. As we have seen with the sequential unpacking operator for lists, tuples, and sets, we can also use the double asterisk operator to unpack a dictionary into a function signature. Now you know about the sequential unpacking operator with one asterisk in front, the dictionary unpacking operator with two asterisks in front, and how to use those in conjunction with the arcs and keyword arcs parameters in function signatures. Let's look at one last example where we put everything together. I prepared another function f, which has three named parameters, a, b, and c, a sequence of unnamed parameters called arcs with one asterisk in front, followed by key w arcs, which is a sequence of named parameters with two asterisks in front. The function does nothing else but print out the parameters we have passed. So first the three named parameters, a, b, and c, then we iterate over the tuple arcs and get arc and print those. And in the end, we're going to iterate over the key value pairs in the dictionary that is represented by key w arcs. To call that function, we enter f123. 123 will be assigned to the parameters a, b, and c. Then we can enter 4, 5, and 6. Those will be assigned to the unnamed sequence of parameters in arcs, and then we can enter additional parameters, d with 7 and e with 5, which will then be assigned to the keyword arguments. And when we press enter, we can see everything has been assigned. a is 1, b is 2, c is 3. Then we have the four, three unnamed arguments and d and e, which have been assigned to the keyword arguments with two asterisks in front. But when we use arcs and keyword arcs with the asterisk and double asterisk operator in one function, we have to make sure that the single asterisk operator comes in front of the double asterisk operator. So if we find a define a function f with keyword arcs and followed by arcs, and we just print arcs and press enter, we can see that gives us an error because arguments cannot follow var keyword arguments. So when you use arcs and keyword arcs with the asterisk and double asterisk operator, make sure to put the arcs in front of the keyword arcs, otherwise your program will spit out an error. In this video, we have demystified the use of the asterisk 
and double asterisk operator in Python and how to use those in your function signature to make your code more versatile. If you made it so far, make sure to comment with a computer emoji down below and don't forget to give this video a like. I wish you a pleasant day and hope to see you soon.